Good afternoon uh, to those people um, joining us on the YouTube channel for the London Borough of Newham. This is a subcommittee of the Licensing um, 2003 Act. Um, I will be chairing it for Omnia Wilson, Chair of Licensing, and I'll just do a few introductory remarks because while we're in this Zoom sort of um, development with the people, I just want to make it clear that to ensure continued public safety around the coronavirus 19, we are advising you members of the public that this meeting will be webcast live. Some we, we are allowed to continue to do, and this is one of them, um, very few exceptions. Mostly now we're meeting live. So uh, hopefully you've joined us in the video section of the London Bar of Newham YouTube site. Um, please be aware that all government restrictions are relating to meetings held in public have been removed. However, the provisions of the Licensing Act 2003 Act permit this meeting to continue to place remotely. Any references throughout this meeting to the bundle is the agenda pack, which you'll also find on the council website, where you look under the heading of Council and Democracy uh, monthly calendar agenda. It's, it's quite difficult to negotiate, but you know if you're persistent, that's the papers. Is that all right, everybody? So we just do introductions? Yeah. So uh, before we do introductions, sorry, we have to do a, what we call a declaration of interest. Declarations of interest. In accordance with the Members Code of Conduct, this is a time for members. References to members are elected councillors. Um, the time for us as elected councillors to declare any disclosable pecuniary interest or non-pecuniary interest that they may have in matters being considered in this meeting, having regard to the guidance attached to the agenda, which is the um, on pages three and four of the bundle. I have no interest to declare. Sarah? Uh, no interest, Chair. And um, Pat? No interest, Chair. Thank you. Now, the confirmation of the procedure is to be found on pages um, five and six of our bundle. So I've introduced myself and it's three members of the committee. Uh, none of us are in the ward affected, which is East Ham Central. I'm Councillor Neil Wilson, Chair of Licensing, and I'll chair throughout, and I represent Plasto South. Sarah? Uh, Councillor Sarah Ruiz, and I represent Custom House Ward. Thank you. And Councillor Murphy, please. I'm Councillor Pat Murphy, Royal Docks. Thank you very much. Now, the three members that have just introduced themselves uh, will be making a the decision if we're joined by other members because it's part of their training to because each case is quite unique um if other people join us um suresh and sebastian it will be for training purposes they won't be decision makers okay can i therefore i've already introduced you to so i'll go in this order um applicant please sebastian can you introduce yourself i'm the sebastian Emmanuel. thank you yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Um, yeah, have you got a, a you know, a sound okay? Can you hear us all right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yes. And Suresh, please. Yeah. My, yeah. This is Suresh Kanabadi. I'm the agent representing the applicant. Thank you very much. Now, the case officer this afternoon, please. Uh, Colin Hunt. I work for London Bar and I'm the case officer. Thank you very much. Our legal representative, because this is an administrative hearing, we are not trained uh, lawyers. Um, we do need legal advice because this is clearly an administrative hearing under the 2003 Licensing Act. So, Umer, please. Umer, Manic Legal Services. Thank you very much. And um, behind the scenes, because the three of us go into deliberations with the clerk, and we, we base it on not on just the bundle, but obviously every word that's said. So, Nisha, can I introduce you at this point? I know you're off camera, but... Yeah, Nisha, the Democratic Services. So she'll be taking, Nisha will be taking copious notes throughout. Um, and the first representation, well, I'll just see the way where people are on the screen. It may not necessarily be the order that we take them. Uh, Connell, please. Connell Stadnish, Protestant and Police <coughs> Licensing. And Commercial Health, Environmental Health, Ian, please. Ian McConnell, Commercial Environmental Health. <coughs> and uh, we... The licensing team is not making the representation. Is, is that correct for this one? It's only those two. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I was waiting for something just in case I'd missed it, messed it up. I, I better make clear that we have we have not hearing. If you're following the bundle, the hearing uh, at number three was um, um, annulled or whatever the phrase because it, it had been settled. So we're on a license number. Uh, paragraph four, the agenda, 
That's the item agenda for the new premises license. So that's to be found on. Uh, oh, sorry, I've left out an important another observer. Alex, can you introduce yourself, please? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alex Mihu. Um, I am one of the local authority designated officer for Newham, and I will just uh, be observing this. Thank you very much. Have I left Thank anybody you. out before we proceed? Thanks very much. And the um, mm -hmm. page reference that we're doing now is a, so out, a, a, a agenda item three was not heard because it didn't need to be. There was agreement away from the committee. We only meet where there's been representations that then have not been subsequently withdrawn. So agenda item four, page 47 at Sequendum. Colin, to introduce, please. Colin. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Excuse me. Members of the licensing subcommittee are to hear and determine an application for a new premises license for Sunrise Local 150 Grangewell Street, <clears throat> E161HD. So, uh, the applicant is a Sebastian Emmanuel and any valid representation that have been made. The Licensing Authority received an application for a new premises license on the 14th of June 2021. The application was advertised at the premises and in the local paper, and a copy of the application is attached to Appendix A. Uh, the license work activities is for sale of alcohol off sales only, Sunday to Thursday, 8 till 2300 hours, and Friday and Saturdays, 8 till midnight. And the opening time of the premises um, applied for is every day from 0600 to midnight. Uh, <clears throat> The Metropolitan Police have made representation against the application on the license and objective for prevention of public nuisance and the prevention of crime disorder and a copy of their letter and crime maps are attached to Appendix B. The Council Commercial Environmental Health Team have made representation against the application on the license and objective of prevention of public nuisance and a copy of their letter is attached to Appendix D. We have had local residents making representation on the license on the four licensing objectives and their letters are attached to Appendix E and these have been restricted. Um, where premises lie within the community impact zone there is a rebuttable presumption that application for a new premises license or club certificate or variation in respect of such premises would normally be refused unless the applicant can demonstrate in in their operating schedule that there will be no negative impact on one or more of the license and objectives. At the hearing, members of the subcommittee would need to be satisfied that the application has applicant has demonstrated this. The community impact of the premises can only be considered where relevant representations are made. This means that if there are no relevant representations, the application must be granted even if it falls within the CIZ. Uh, members of the subcommittee should note that each uh, application within the CIZ needs to be considered at its own merit and a blanket refusal cannot be made. Where the licensing authority decides to impose conditions on the license, whether in the CIZ or not, such conditions must be appropriate and proportionate for the promotion of the license and objectives. Conditions should be clear and unequivocal. The Secretary of State has issued guidance to the licensing authority to which they must have regards in carrying out the licensing functions. Members of the subcommittee should note that copies of the guidance are available at the meeting of the subcommittee. Alternatively, copies can be obtained directly from the committee clerk. Licensing authorities may only depart from only depart, sorry, only depart from the guidance if they have good reason to do so. These premises do fall within the CIZ, and a map of the CIZ area is attached to Appendix F. <clears throat> the premises has held a license that was converted in September 2005 into the new premises license under the Licensing Act 2003. The license has been transferred twice in that time, uh, the last being on the 4th of October 20, 2011. On the 24th of June 2014, the Council Trading, Steam called, Trading Standard Team called the license in for review following the, license, following the sale of alcohol to an underage person on two separate occasions and for stocking and selling uh, duty abated alcohol that was seized again on two separate occasions over a four month period. On the 19th of September 2014, a licensing subcommittee revoked the license. An appeal was lodged by the license holder at the time and was due to be heard by Waltham Forest uh, Court on the 1st of April 2015. The day before the hearing was, take, was to take place, the applicant withdrew the appeal. Therefore, the subcommittee's decision to revoke the license took effect from immediate, uh, immediately. Uh, on the 29th of January 2016, the Licensing Authority received a new premises license application, which received, which received representation and the application was listed to be heard by the Licensing Subcommittee. 
On the 23rd of March 2016, at the hearing, members, of, me, members were advised that the application had been withdrawn. On the 19th of October 2016, a new application by an agent was received by the Licensing Authority. On the 29th of September 2016, the, applicant, the application was heard by the members of the subcommittee and the licence was reviewed. No appeal was lodged. An application for a new premises licence was received by the Licensing Authority on the 19th of November 2019. Uh, representation were received from responsible authorities and on the 16th of January 2020, the members of the Licensing Subcommittee heard the application where it was decided uh, that the application will be refused. <clears throat> uh, the, a plan of the premises is attached to Appendix G and a map of the area is attached to Appendix H. The members of the subcommittee uh, are asked to hear the, to hear the application, the representation of the licence holder and any valid representation received from responsible authorities and to determine the application. And that concludes the report. Thank you very much. Now, um, Councillor Ali has joined the call. Um, Councillor Ali, can you introduce yourself, please? I think you're on mute. Mohammed, can you come off mute? Okay. Can you hear me now? It's very <laughs> bad. It's now? very bad. But, you know, but please. You you, you, yeah, we can hear you back now. Um, uh, um, obviously, you're, you, 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 um, right, you, you've had difficulty joining us. But you're the observer, so just making it clear that what your role was, again, another observer who won't be part of the decision making process. Is that clear, uh, Mohammed? You know, you, you can, you're welcome to stay. Yep. I know you've had yes, trouble yes, getting yes. in. Is that OK, everybody? Is everybody clear yeah, what his like, role I is? Really, really, like, I really, like, I did, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Suresh and, and Sebastian, are you OK with that? You know, we're just having another observer. Yeah. But yeah, we are okay with that. Thank exactly. you. Exactly. Thank you. Because it would be the same in the town hall if we were meeting physically. Sometimes people get held up with their work or traffic or whatever. Anyway, um, or now it's internet often. Right. Um, <laughs> now, um, before we make too much of going, well, well not too much, because um, we had history uh, listed. Thank you very much, Colin. Is this a new applicant, um, Sebastian Victoria Emmanuel? He was not involved in any of these previous things in the history no he he wasn't uh, this is a new applicant uh, with the new premises right now we had local residents and um i need to ask how why are they not on the call can you tell the committee in open session why they're not present please okay so so when we receive uh, re representations from uh, local residents uh, generally it's either e via email or a uh, letter of representation via post um, these ones were via post, and um, um, I, I wrote a letter to them. Obviously, now we're doing it on the um, via the Zoom links. They needed to, I, they needed to um, have the link to be sent so they could log on today. Um, I sent some numerous letters um, asking them to send me the email just so I could send the link. However, I've not received anything back from them, so um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to. Um, contact them and for them to li link into this um, committee. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, um, Appendix E that refers to these residents is by virtue of paragraph one of the access to information procedure rules set out in the constitution, which is pursuant upon schedule 12A of the Local Government Act <coughs> of 1972. Um, the appendix contains information relating to an individual. The public interest in maintaining this exemption outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information. So it's even more important, as people are not here, that we observe that strictly. We're not identifying individuals. I will make reference to what might be said in cross you know, questioning, but if we can continue not to identify individuals that are on the green paper. Suresh, you concur? Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks very much for that cooperative uh, approach. And can we have the map then first of the location, Colin? Are we able to get our technology in order with Google Maps? I like because I can see the view then, but whatever you can manage. Is that, is that... Well, that's come up. Yep. Yeah. That's Grangewood Street. So yeah. there's 150 there. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So there's 150 there. This is, Gr this is um, Grangewood Street, this one here. And this yep. is Catherine Road, this one here. Can you see my cursor? 
Yep. If I part, if I take you on to, uh, can we have a look at the the, the street view or yeah, that... street view? So this is Catherine Road, and there's the premises there. Yep. Grangewood Street is this one down the side there. And the um, Udala restaurant is is slap bang opposite. Yep. Dead opposite there, yeah. Yep, yep. So if if you're looking this way, you're going to Romford Road. If you're looking this the other way, you're going to Rom uh, Barking Road. That yep. way. Okay, everybody clear on location? Yep. Yeah. Now, uh, now because it's in the CIZ, yeah. we need to also see the CIZ map if we can, Colin. Yep. So uh, there's the CIZ map. If you've noticed, it's just inside within this the CIZ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so but I'll we have to do lines somewhere, and it definitely was in the CIZ. Yes, yes, it is. Um, so I've actually put it in as one fifty. Normally, I do a postcode, but I've because it was so close to it, I've actually put it in as one fifty, um, and it's right on the edge. So if you look at that, it is within the CIZ. Just yeah. Thanks very much. Any questions on that, colleagues? No, before we make progress to the representations, um, Umar, anything else? Can you hear me? Nothing else, sir. Yeah. So can we clear the screen then? Because it, yeah. It's, Thank you. It's difficult. Thanks, Colin, for that. Um, so the first representation is Metropolitan Police, and that's Connell, page 71 at Sequendum. You need to come off mute, Connell. You did say you had learned how to do it, but. <laughs> <laughs> Connell, your turn. Have we lost Connell? No, he's there. He's just not. Um, Connell, can you hear me? He's unmuted now. No. Ah, oh, that's better. Can you hear right. me now? Yes, yep. yes, yeah. Yep. Apologies for that, Chair. Yep. Um, on behalf of the Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police, I wish to object to an application for a new premises license for Sunrise Local, 150 Grangewood Street, E6 1HD, on the grounds of the prevention of crime and disorder and the prevention of public nuisance. Mm. Um, you've heard the hours that the applicant uh, wishes to have and the opening times. Uh, the premises are situated within a cumulative impact zone as designated in the Newham Council Licensing Policy 2020 that states that there is a requirement for the applicant to comprehensively demonstrate there will be no additional negative impact on the vicinity in terms of the four licensing objectives. It also states that in completing the operating schedule, applicants are expected to have regard to the statements of the licensing policy for their area. They must also be aware of the expectations of the licensing authority and the responsible authorities as to the steps that are appropriate for the promotion of the licensing objectives. This is usually done through the applicant submitting a comprehensive and robust set of proposed conditions in the operating schedule. In section 18 of the operating schedule, the applicant's agent has submitted a reasonably comprehensive set of conditions, although, um, there has been some discussion regarding um, some of the, the uh, points set out. Uh, they are on page 61 of the agenda pack. Um, I'll, I'll go through them and, and refer to them in turn. Um, please welcome the proposed conditions regarding CCTV, Channel 25, a maximum ABV of 6% and that spirits will be, uh, shall be behind the counter. Um, that implies that they are not available for self-service, but it's not actually explicitly stated. Um, please would like, if the license is granted, please would like um, that condition in the model condition to be uh, included um, if you are minded to do so. However, there is also a, a proposal not to sell single cans rather than two or four. And the proposal regarding concealing alcohol from the public view when the premises is um, open outside of the permitted hours for sales of alcohol is inadequate. Um, ideally, um, we would want a solid lockable barrier so that somebody couldn't put their hand behind the, um, uh, what is sometimes a rather flimsy barrier and, and have access to the alcohol. Also, there is no mention of whether there will be a premises license holder, DPS, or a personal license holder pres <coughs> excuse me, present at the premises at all times during the permitted hours for licensable activities. Uh, finally, in condition number 12 on uh, paragraph A states, 
If the recipient of a delivery of alcohol appears to be under 25 years of age, recognised photographic identification will be requested before any intoxicating liquor is handed over. Acceptable proof of age shall include identification bearing the customer's photograph, date of birth and integral holo holographic mark or security measure or security measure. Suitable means of identification would include pass approved, proof of age card, photo card, driving license and passport. It does not specify whether the deliveries will be undertaken by members of the staff or by a third party such as Deliveroo or Uber. I've had a discussion with uh, Suresh and he stated they will be done by Uber Eats. Uh, the crime statistics for incidents of antisocial behaviour and violence that are specific to within a radius of a quarter of a mile of the premises postcode uh, are submitted with this application to provide a context within which the applicant will be operating if the licence is granted. The recorded numbers of incidents for antisocial behaviour are 23 in February, 41 in March, 31 in April, 31 in May, and I've updated them for the hearing, 29 in June, 17 in July, 29 in August, and 22 in September. So they do fluctuate a bit, but they're not wildly. Um, the, the, the figure of uh, 29 in June and August would be the most con concerning. The recorded numbers of incidents of violent crimes are 17 in February, 25 in March, 19 in April, and 19 in May. Uh, and again, the updated figures, 25 in June, 16 in July, 22 in August, and 17 in September. Um, the police are concerned that having another source of alcohol in the vicinity may attract street drinkers and other alcohol dependent adults to the premises. That in turn may lead to a detrimental effect on the well-being and quality of life for local residents. Therefore, please would like the applicant to attend the licensing subcommittee hearing in order to demonstrate that he understands why the area is being designated as a CIZ. He understands the conditions that are being proposed on his behalf and why they are necessary to promote the four licensing objectives. Um, if I could just add, as far as I can tell, none of the incidents uh, are, of antisocial behaviour or violence are associated with the premises. Um, and also uh, the premises was visited um, in August when they were operating under a 10, um, I think around about the August bank holiday um, by John Chislett from the um, local authority license officer. And he, uh, he visited twice in fact, and there were no issues uh, that it came to his notice. Um, one final thing on um, regarding the wording of the conditions um, on page 61, um, number nine, condition number nine in section 18, um, the licensee to ensure that each member of staff authorised to sell alcohol has received adequate training on the law with regard to age restricted products. Um, the applicant's agent has agreed that uh, it, that should add and proxy sales, uh, which is a standard wording in the model conditions. Thank you. You're on mute, Councillor Wilson. Hello, Councillor Ruiz. Now, can you hear me? Do you have any questions of Connell at this point? Uh, not from me, thank you. And Councillor Murphy? Yeah. Uh, are there any issues that you raised in your letter dated June this year that still remain unresolved? Um, the... Um, the incidents of antisocial behaviour um, rose significantly in August and are slightly falling in September. No, so I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the, the issues, issues you raised. raised in connection with the application where you expressed some concern about various aspects of the application. Um, no, they've more or less been agreed. Um, I believe the, the applicants, I, I did point out no single cans, um, and they should be either two or four. 
I believe the from my discussion with Suresh, he uh, would like to argue that two uh, cans or bottles would be appropriate. Um, but otherwise, uh, no, they have been um, agreed. But our expectation usually is that it's no less than four cans. Yeah, but I think we're going into what we might, you know, d develop as a summative after we've heard all representations. Councillor Murphy, are you with me? Yep. Rather than talking about yeah. numbers at this point, because we haven't heard from the applicant. Yeah, well, it is a, it, a, I thought it was an important point because we make such a big thing about it. Yeah, quite oh, yeah. yeah. But I mean, uh, yeah, I, I think that um, Ian uh, will, will make a similar point as well. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, anything yeah. else? Anything else? For Pat? No. My no. one was on this premises license holder. Has that been resolved? Um, no. Well, no. yes, it has. Um, both um, the applicant and his wife uh, do hold personal licences. Right. Um, so the, the argument was that they will be running it. So one of them will be in the shop uh, during the uh, hours for licensable yeah. activities. Yeah. Anything else, Pat? Sorry. No, I think that's that's enough. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Any any questions? Questions? Remember, uh, Suresh or Sebastian for Connell at the moment. But you've had a discussion behind the scenes, clearly. Anyway, but yeah. Any no, questions? No, not yet. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much, um, Umair. Yeah, sorry, if I may, with your leave, um, just a question on the visit in August 2021. Oh, yes, yes, that wasn't contained within the bundle, and we need to get that clear. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, does, uh, what, what, will Connell be able to elaborate what the 10 um, application and why, what was the details of the 10 application? Were they serving alcohol at the time? Um, yeah. In order to... In order for full transparency, we're not going to use three-letter acronyms uh, <laughs> during a meeting. Temporary event notices are granted. Um, so can we, you know, just be clear? Because if public are watching this, I think it's a bit confusing. Um, a temporary event notice is, is, is offered up. If there's no objections, it can be for a limited period. Connell, can we just uh, find out how long that was and any more details? Yeah, ap apologies, Chair, for using the acronym. Um, okay. Yeah, it was... Um, they applied for two tens, I believe, four sales of alcohol. Uh, the hours were um, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, and it was just sales of alcohol. Um, and uh, John Chislett visited on both occasions and um, found his, he's um, told me today there were no issues. Uh, with the, prim the way the premises we've been operated. And just finally, I like these heat maps. We are still not of the um, getting that far with the um, computer aided stuff for the Met that we can have anything uh, further developed on this, Colin. Is that right? That's correct, unfortunately, yes. This is the best we can do, folks, at the moment about the surrounding area. But basically, in summary, is, am I correct in, in saying that even with lockdowns and all the rest of it, that we're averaging approximately, and this is a very rough you know, form of stick I'm using here, rule of thumb or whatever, that there's approximately one incident of antisocial behaviour equivalent per day um, and one incident of violent crime per day. Yeah, rough, roughly, Chair, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the lockdown ended in July, um, so perhaps the figure for August is to be expected of, of quite a large rise yeah. and a fall in September. Um, yeah. But yes, roughly, that's yeah. correct. OK, um, shall we make progress, Sarah? Are you OK with that? Yeah, yep, absolutely on? fine. Yeah, and uh, Pat... Should we move to the next one? Councillor Murphy, we yeah. okay to move? Yeah. 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 We'll move to the next one. Yeah. The next representation is from Ian. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Chair. It's on page uh, 77. Um, commercial Environmental Health Team is making a representation in respect to this application in relation to the licensing objectives of prevention of public nuisance. The premises lies in one of the Council's designated cumulative impact zones as details in the licensing policy of March 2020. As such, there is a requirement to comprehensively demonstrate 
that there will be no additional impact on the local area in terms of the four licensing objectives. Perennial's representation of visited the area on the 28th of June this year. 150 Grangewood Street is located on the corner of Grangewood Street, Catherine Road. The area is largely residential with some parades of shops with flats above. Nearest residential premises are above this and the adjoining premises. Uh, we know what the applicant is seeking a licence for. Hasn't been any complaints of noise, antisocial behaviour in relation to this premises in the last six months. The two other premises licensed um, for, for off sales of alcohol, which is uh, Akos Food and Wine, 124 Catherine Road, licensed for off sales of alcohol every day, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. And Coogan's Traders, 113 Wakefield Street, which is licensed for sales of alcohol, Monday to Saturday, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. and Sundays, 10 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. The applicant seeks to prevent public nuisance by not selling single cans or bottles and not selling beers, lagers, ciders, alcohol pops or stouts with an ABB above 6%. Selling two cans offers little deterrent to street drinkers and having no size limit on spirit bottles means that street drinkers can buy two cans and increase the alcohol content by adding a small spirit. In addition, the applicant hasn't detailed how customers drinking outside the premises will be dealt with, whether they intend to keep the forecourt clear of litter, what times deliveries and waste collections will be carried out, and even whether they intend to display a sign asking customers to leave quietly. Not satisfied, the applicant has comprehensively demonstrated that there will be no additional impact on the local area in terms of the four licensing objectives. Granting this license may make this premises attractive to street drinkers, and is likely to lead to an increase in antisocial behaviour, street drinking, littering and public urination. Thus, on behalf of the commercial environmental health team, wish to make a formal representation in, in relation to this application. What time was your visit, uh, what time of the day was your visit, which you list in your representation on the oh, 28th of June? Uh, 28th of June. Let me just check that. Hold on a second. Sorry, it's going a bit slowly. At this. <laughs> no, no, don't worry. Um, <sighs> daytime or an evening, really. I mean, it doesn't it, have to it, be it, like yeah, ten it, fifty-one or something. It, I don't it, yeah, it. it would have been a daytime visit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and was there evidence of street drinkers either by their debris? Uh, you know, cans littering the, the place, um, or actual people sitting on the street? I, I didn't see any cans littering no. the street, but there were certainly cans in in bags left by the street sweepers. Yep, yep. So exactly. they're, they're Ready clean. for the collection by the, 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 the other staff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, uh, during that visit... Uh, you know, you've said also about um, how close it is. It's a very uh, residents are cheek by jowl with this premises and two other off licenses. Um, you know, um, have you, you we, we, it's very difficult under this sort of legislation that hasn't been revised since it was inaugurated in 2003. But, you know, we, we are where we are with that. Um, is there an issue in terms of your team in complaints about the Catherine area generally? Um, in relation to street drinking, do you mean? Yeah, or, or anything else that you've uh, highlighted about, you know, yes, I mean, I, I, social behaviour, you I, know. I, we've, we've had sort of two, I mean, two complaints um, this year about street drinking in the area. One's a bit further north on mm. Catherine Roads. Mm. Um, uh, another one is near the junction with Aintree Road, which is not a million miles from yeah. here. That's, that's quite close. Um, so yeah, there, there are, com the fact that we're getting complaints, yep. um, a lot of areas, we don't receive complaints about street drinkers. So that tells me this, there is a problem in this area. Sarah, anything? Sorry, Councillor Ruiz. Uh, not at this moment, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Murphy. Yes, Chair. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, Ian, uh, if, um, 
because the report is four months old um, and you express some concerns about the application. Uh, have you received anything in between that, that letter and now about um, being reassured about the concerns you raised? No, I haven't, no. You haven't received any communication from the applicant or his agent? Uh, no, I was copied into some communication uh, with Metropolitan Police, but I haven't seen any proposed conditions or uh, other, me other measures from the applicant. Right, thank you. Right, <coughs> thank you very much. Um, is there anything that... Yes? Uh, Sebastian or your agent, Sir Ress, any questions at the moment to Ian? Uh, no, thank you, Chair. Um, Amir, anything that we need to dispose no, of, isn't it? No. Thank you. Now, the other representation I clearly will not read out because it would be contrary to the whole spirit of the confidentiality. But just for everybody's information, we will be considering what is under the restriction items under Appendix E. We, you know, people, we can't question on their accuracy of their statements, but I may weave it into one or two questions because you've had to bundle Suresh and Sebastian, so it shouldn't yeah. come as a rabbit out the hat to you. Okay, now it's the applicant or their agent to make their case for the granting of a new premises license then at Sunrise Road. Uh -huh. Suresh, are you kicking off? Yeah, thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, I think. Um, you know, you heard the history of this particular premises. Uh, it's been licensed premises uh, during the cumulative impact policy came into place and before. Uh, Chair, I think uh, we did conduct it, you know, all the responsible authorities, including Ian, before we put the application, I'm sure he will remember that. Uh, and then we had a response uh, uh, from Conal for that. Uh, and then we did speak uh, on this application before we put the application in. Um, and we talked about the hours as well. Uh, and then, you know, obviously there are correspondences we copied in. Um, and um, in during the hours there, you know, we, um, we talked about that the applicant really wanted to have like a longer hours. Um, the Conal was really said, you know, no, there's no way, you know, uh, you can't have longer hours. Um, so then we uh, consider those, all the points raised by him. Um, so we put an application, the hours eight to 11 and midnight on the two days. Um, Chair, also I wanted to uh, test the background of this application, Chair, and also we just want to give a little background of the applicant, I think it's very important. Uh, so Emmanuel, you know, Sebastian, you know, he's been running nearly 15 years in Islington. Uh, uh, a licensed premises and he sold the business, you know, years ago, I think, over a year ago. Um, and um, he and his wife been living in East Cam for more than 30 years. Um, and now he, both of them have taken over these premises and both of them are license holders um, and um, to run near to their home, uh, like, their, like their retirement business or something, you know. Um, so um, both of them are really well experienced and um, they're well, you know, uh, well organized people. Um, I think you can see from the visit the authorities done also, uh, they were not, they were really happy with them. Both of them were there when they visited them and they were happy. And they know, uh, I mean, I talked to Sebastian Manuel as well because they've been living in East Ham. They know about the street ringing problems. Uh, it's something, you know, they don't want, they are not, they don't want that, obviously. Uh, yeah, so that's why, you know, you can see uh, we have put the application with the comprehensive conditions uh, in place. Um, and also, Chair, you know, you heard already temporary notices, you know, it's been run. Uh, and also, as you can see uh, uh, from the crime figures and things like that has been given, uh, we don't see any increase in the last few months, you know, at least. Uh, and 29 in July, like, you know, antisocial behaviors and the violent crime has gone down. We can see that. Um, so considering all of those there, um, now coming back to these applications, um, Chair, I think we did speak to Conal and we will assume, you know, Ian will be mostly, you know, part of the authorities with work with partnership. 
and now um there are you know the conditions we put forward and we were really looking at together to see whether they are adequately addressing the cumulative back policy and so that's um so one of the thing chair i think we had looked at is um a conditions to be amended and updated so if i can quickly do that chair in the in the meantime here i think you already mentioned that uh, on page number sorry i'm muted sorry i'm now unmuted that would be very helpful but if you can make references to the pages because it you know a I would do this if we were physically present in the tank chamber and we've got people joining us on Zoom. So if we can do page references, that would be yeah, helpful. I, yes, yes, Chair, definitely. Uh, on page number 61, uh, Chair, so we agreed to amend the condition number nine. With the proxy uh, sales. Yeah, yes. with the proxy sales. Okay, we agreed to that. So we were looking at that, you know, to, mm -hmm. uh, and also... Uh, Chair, I think he was asking about the delivery, you know, raising concern about that. But I think we said, you know, Uber, uh, we will be using, it's not like their own deliveries of, from the shop staff. Um, and um, and single cans and bottles of uh, things, Chair, I think what I would like to point out, I know uh, you have raised some issues with that. Uh, this Chair, is reference, think, reference to number 13 on the screen. Yeah, number 13. Chair. Are you standing by that wording or are you going with the recommendation of... No, uh, Chair, I think uh, what we are like to have is, um, you know, we want to definitely get the balance, you know, uh, because uh, having a four cans in a local business, I think if you really think about this shop, really, the, the majority of customers you know, more than 90% will be people living locally, you know. So if I am living next door to a shop, you know, I wouldn't want like a four cans. I could buy a four cans chair. Imagine, you know, I only want to bring one, but I can't buy one, so let me buy two, but then I might finish the two. But if I have a four, you know, I will definitely finish, want to have an extra one, you know, three. So I think what we are looking at, you know, we want to have a little balance and really, promote the health, you know, not drinking too much. But in the meantime, Chair, you know, we are not selling uh, strong beers, you know, the alcohol volumes. Um, and also, Chair, the additional conditions to support that, uh, I think Ian has uh, raised that concerns about uh, selling miniatures. Uh, Chair, I think that's one of the other conditions we're gonna add is not selling uh, uh, miniatures, uh, less than 20 CL. I thought normally the little ones, the 5 CL and 10 CL, which people might buy to mix it with a beer or some other drinks like a Coca-Cola or something. So we we are happy to add that, you know, I mean, as part of the, I mean, we talked about that as well uh, with Conal. Um, so about the miniatures, uh, we didn't agree to the, the size of it, but um, we thought, you know, uh, 10 CL and the 5 CL, which are popular one and cheap ones. Um, and we could stop that, you know, and add part of the conditions. Um, and Chair, also uh, condition number 16 um, is, we already said, you know, while the premises is, uh, you know, not open, but not for alcohol, we will cover, uh, but Conal suggested about solid, uh, structure. Uh, Chair, I think, you know, we got to be really proportionate for the small business like this. Uh, and the alcohol are behind, not in the front as well. So it's at the rear of the, you know, if you look at the plan, Chair, you know, you can see where the alcohol is located. It's not somebody can easily, you know, pick out and run away quickly because there are, um, you know, in the front, you know, there are so many other product available, non-alcoholic ones. Um, so we said, you know, we will cover it up, you know, screen it off and cover it. So the alcohol is not, you know, publicly displayed and people know that, you know, it's being covered so they can't get access to it, you know, easily. Uh, so that's what we would like to add there. I think in the future, if there is any issues and problems, um, you know, there may be, uh, the applicant may be put like a structure which will cost, you know, changing a lot of stuff for that chair. I think the fridge will be closed anyway, but I think for the other wines and things like that, you know, where you're looking at having a uh, screened off 
uh, instead of kind of having like lockable uh, things. Um, and also, Chair, you know, I think it's, it's to put point out about, I think Ronald was talking about, uh, the applicant and his wife, both, um, both are mostly in you know, a family-run business uh, in and around, they will be there. Both of them are license holders. Uh, however, Chair, you know, they will have additional staff, but we have a strong staff training program and strong condition, Chair. So we feel that, you know, uh, there is no need uh, I mean, I wouldn't say, like, I would say, it's, you know, we would request you to consider not having a condition to say, you know, there is a personal license holder to be in presence, you know, at all times, uh, considering, you know, the experience of the, the management and uh, and uh, two, two people are already a license holders and a small family business, you know, when they want to have an extra staff chair, you know, it can be, they can train them, but, you know, getting a license, uh, you know, got to have, a bit, a bigger business will be better. I mean, it's is is workable. Maybe it can be difficult to workability for this business. So that's what I would like to point out, Chair. Um, and um, Chair, I think that's all I wanted to say. Right. Okay. Uh, but, thank yep. you so much. We, other issues may arise, to rest, as you know, through questioning, and we'll. Yeah. Come and back. also, one thing I must point out, Chair, if I may, please. Um, I know we have representation from, you know, we didn't have a representation from the authorities. Probably, you know, John Sislet visited the premises and he was really happy with the area. Uh, normally he does. Uh, and we have two representation from the responsible authorities and we've been in communication with them. Chair, the other public representation, and we don't believe the applicant and us, you know, we don't really believe they are authentic one. It's made up, you know, by somebody uh, it's possibly the applicant was saying, I think I'm not going to say any of the names. It's possibly, you know, uh, some people have, you know, issues with the previous landlord or whatever that is, you know, uh, because these are falsely represented. Whatever is written is not the truth, right? The applicant and wife, you know, they know they've been in the business for a long time. You know, they are very reputable people. But we don't have any address uh, contact details. I think uh, applicant was saying they probably put the name and somebody's address. Maybe it's not the real ones because you can see there were no response back to that. Nowadays, chair, you know who doesn't have an email address? Who doesn't have a? Well, I think you're in the grounds of speculation, so I'm I'm going to stop you there because these people aren't here to defend themselves, and it will be we will take due con uh, consideration of how much weight we give when people yeah. don't actually attend. But Suresh, you're going into speculation, which I'd rather we didn't. Okay. So, you know, I, I, I want to dispose of the item on that because um, I, I'm going to ask questions on it in a very generalised way without identifying. Okay. Um, it is alleged that they were selling alcohol during weekends and selling it every day. Is it, is, is it your refuse, refuse, but you're refuting that claim? that's contained in, in the bundle on page 85. So page 85. Uh, Paragraph three says, when this shop was open, they were selling alcohol during the weekends, but lately they've been selling it every day. Oh, uh, but they, I think um, they these people didn't know there was a temporary license in place. Okay, right. Yeah, so um, I think they could misunderstand the whole situations, you know? Right. Uh, so that's what really happens here, there. Uh, the next thing I have to dispose of, even though it's referred to and it's allegedly we have no, um, so, you know, substantiation of anything um, else. But, uh, you know, there's references to public nuisance. It, that's already in the um, uh, from the responsible authorities. But on page 88, there is, uh, um, according to the uh, uh, a female within the shop, the council gave permission to sell alcohol because they knew someone in the council and they had been paid a big amount of uh, to get the license permission. So uh, I want that disposed of, if we can. Yeah, that is totally a false uh, allegation made. Uh, okay. Even, you know, I think we should really, you know, according to the law, you know, they shouldn't do that. Actually, you know, we might probably get uh, details of the person because the lady was really upset about this. And no. also Sebastian, you know, himself. 
Yeah. I'm being very careful how I phrase that because we're still on public and I don't want to go into secret session on this. I'd rather we dispose of it publicly, but you can see why I'm raising it during public session to dispose of it. Right. Uh, Can I start the questions? Is that all right, Um, Mr. Rest, please? Yes. So your applicant uh, uh, has been within this business. You say he's local. Um, Sebastian, are you a freeholder or a leaseholder of these premises? And how long is your lease for? <clears throat> fifteen years. Sorry, <clears throat> I'm 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 getting a sore throat, so I'm having to keep drinking water. Um, fifteen years. Yes. And uh, the rent that you're paying per month? Yeah, two thousand dollars. Okay. Um, if you've been in the business twenty years or fifteen years, sorry, I'm I'm exaggerating. Fifteen, twenty years. It's it's of that sort of ilk when you were running a business in um, Islington. Your your agent uh, said you and your wife are personal license holders. So you can tell us what the four licensing objectives are? Uh, No. Right. No, I think he didn't understand the question. Sorry. Sorry, Suresh, you don't you don't come in, please. I'm oh, okay. asking the questions. Okay. The right. applicant, you, you, you are Harry's agent. You're not my agent or his agent at this point. This is a direct question. I did say I was going to uh, ask your uh, your uh, applicant directly. Okay, Sebastian, thank you. Yeah. I will try and clarify my question if it's if it's confusing. You've been in the business, running a business over in Islington for how long? Uh, Fifteen years. So you can tell this committee what the four licensing objectives are. No, that, that's when I sold it, the business. It's Lincoln when I sold it. No, the, the, the hearing is under four licensing objectives. Uh, Whether you're in East Lincoln or Camden or Waltham Forest or anywhere within the English uh, jurisdiction, it would be the same. So yeah, what are the four licensing objectives? No. No, I did Sarah, do you wish to come in on the Community of Impact Zone one? Me, yes, I did, actually, uh, yeah. Chair. Yeah. Um, Sebastian, could you tell us what you understand by the Cumulative Impact Zone in which your premises sits? Which one are the... Yeah, the items of ten. Private of the premise beside uh, I have CCTV and uh, police uh, button, everything there. Uh, Including the record. Did you but, understand uh, what I meant by that question? Yeah, yes. Okay. Yes, so, um, could you repeat again what you understand? by a cumulative impact zone. Yeah. The public staff. Okay. I don't think I'm going to get any further, Chair. Yes, ma'am. From next door. Councillor Murphy, sorry. Do you have anything at this point to the applicant? Well, well um, uh, no, Chair. Right. I'm just, well, I'm just, there's only one thing outstanding, and that is, but you, both you and Councillor Ruiz have covered the, the important aspects. But I'd be interested to know what uh, um, Connell and Ian have made of their concerns that they outlined in the previous letters. Yeah. That's yeah. the only thing I would like yeah. to know. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. So Suresh or Sebastian can answer this one. We're in an area of stress in Catherine Road. I go up it very regularly. It's my way between meetings of school governors and all sorts of things that are not always in the town hall. Catherine Road is very close to where I'm sitting now in my own house. It is very busy at every time of day. We have people parking at very odd angles and not going half on curb, half on the road. There is public urination, there is antisocial behaviour, there is street drinking and littering. And and how can you reassure this committee that you're not going to add to the problems of the area? Um, 
Chair, I think... Um... Uh, sorry, Sebastian first, then you. Yeah. Sebastian is living in East Ham, so ought to know the problems of Catherine Road, with all due respect, sir. So I'm asking your applicant, who's going to be running this as a business with alcohol, how he's not going to add to those issues. Yes, sir. Yes, um, already my shop is CCTV camera and everything there, including recording 20 hours, mm -hmm. recording my, my shop. And uh, safety, buy up, alarm button. Can I put it another way to you, Sebastian? While you were, when you were in Islington, how many staff did you have on the site? Uh, two. At any one time? Two. That two. was you and your wife? Yeah. And no other staff. Yeah. So, Me and my wife and other staff. Three and you're going to have the same amount of people working for you at this place with alcohol. Yeah. 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 Now, the, we, we've got an objection from Ian, who is public protection, and we have a duty of care that overrides all other considerations as councillors for the for the uh, economic and social well-being of our population of three hundred thousand people. Now they're not all going to go in your shop, yeah. and they're not all going to go making a, a, a nuisance of themselves. But you've heard the figures, so how? Why is it that you haven't even um, said whether you intended to display a sign asking customers to leave quietly? Because if you're going to sell alcohol, if we were to grant this, you're going to be selling alcohol to midnight on two nights. And people generally, when they ruck up to an off license, might also be stocking up on their alcohol. They may already have had some alcohol and they're not always known to be quiet. So why did you not put that in? Yeah, because not, not leaving quietly in consideration for the people above and uh, across the road. I mean, people live there as well as shop there. I'm not selling single cans. No, well, we, we, I'm not on single cans. I'm talking about people, you know, if you have an off license, people yeah. can ruck up at it and they can be intoxicated already or halfway there. And um, whether they, we, we agree to this or not, people do are in an area as, as community of impact for a reason. Uh, can I put it back to you, Suresh? Why have you not uh, included anything about leaving the area quietly? an area under pressure of severe traffic congestion, um, pollution, urination, littering, etc. I'm glad to ask your agent, sorry, Sebastian, but you know okay. you can ask as well, uh, either of you. Why have you not even put uh, something up about leaving? Uh, sir, I think um, we understand, you know, although we haven't put part of the conditions, you know, we are happy to add, but on the other hand, Chair, you know, um, he had already a sign on the door, you know, when I visited, I saw it, you know, keep quiet and leaving the premises. Oh, right. Yeah. Because I think it incorporated is... that yeah. uh, into the conditions, but I think it's something he did it without putting it under the conditions. Because, um, you know, you'll you know from hearings uh, with us uh, uh, again, Suresh, that we are quite forensic in our analysis and trying to dissect things. Ian, I'm going to bring you in. It was alleged that there was a discussion, but you're saying there wasn't a discussion about your point. So can, can you ask the agent any questions at this point on this to clarify it for the committee? Yes. Yes, Chair. Um, so in, in relation to people drinking outside your store, what action will you be taking if you were to get a license? And that's just Sebastian. Yeah. If you're drinking, I'm not saving alcohol all the time next time. I told them, don't drink in front of the shop. The next time I'm not selling the people. Okay. Um, and you're not going to ask them to leave quietly? You're not going to ask them to, to vacate the area? Yeah, I, I mean, anything bottled, anything I can clean it myself. Okay. Um, what time are you going to be having your deliveries and waste collection? And um, they're coming sometime six o'clock. Six o'clock always. Six o'clock in the morning. Evening. In the evening. Yeah. That's the that's the waste collection, is it, or the delivery? No, waste collection. Waste. Yes. Waste. But when, sorry, Ian, were you asking about the delivery of alcoholic beverages? Yes. So when would the alcohol be rucking up there? I am um, Hoover before I Hoover delivery. Now they're the people collecting it on behalf of others. Um, Ian, are you talking about deliver de the deliveries of alcohol and waste collections? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
the waste collection coming evening time, six o'clock. Yeah. And then, um, of course, I don't, last time, first time, when I'm selling time, I order Uber and delivery coming after 10 o'clock morning. Okay. okay. Um, and in relation to your, to the area in front of the shop? Yes, sir. Sorry? Yes, sir. Repeat again. Yeah, in relation to the area in front of the shop, yeah. Um, do you intend to keep that area clear of litter? Yes. Yeah. There are very small clear in the litter. And I'm myself, front of myself, I clear myself. You clear it yourself? What, yeah. the, at the end of business each day? Yes. I don't have any further questions, Chair. Uh, Connell? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a couple of questions. Um, the deliveries, um, will they be food and alcohol or will it just be alcohol by itself? Um, no, food and alcohol. They'll all be food and alcohol. No, you won't deliver alcohol by itself. No, no, food and alcohol. No, now I am selling only food. Okay. And um, when some, how will that be done? Will it be, will you have an app that people, um, contact you to, to, to request the delivery or order the food or how will that be done? And now with the food only I'm coming most of them. Some people are asking alcohol, but I'm, I'm not selling. I don't have alcohol. No license. But people, many people are asking alcohol. Hmm. Sorry, Connor, you've gone back on mute. You're, you're, you're catching it from the chair. We keep pressing the wrong buttons. So. Apologies, Chair. Um, that's all. Thank you. No further questions. Is it on this point, Sarah? On, you uh, well, <coughs> yep. Sort of, yes. Yep, that's fine. Yep. <coughs> I just wondered why you felt there was a need to sell alcohol at 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, eight o'clock morning is uh, open the shop. Yeah, but you open the shop at six o'clock according to your schedule. Yeah, so normally nowadays I'm opening eight o'clock sometime. Okay, and I just wondered why yeah. you felt that there was a need to sell alcohol at eight o'clock in the morning. No, I now I'm not selling alcohol. No, but you're in when if we grant you a license. Yeah, eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah, and I want to know why you think that you need to sell alcohol at eight o'clock. I don't want to sell it, um, but people are asking. But if if you weren't selling at eight o'clock, they wouldn't be able to buy it, would they? Uh, yeah, no. People are asking, then I have to sell. Otherwise, I don't want to sell it. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Now, we've, we've had a long debate on this issue of four cans over the time I've been, you know, on licensing committee. And Councillor Murphy has had the same. It gets a little bit, you know, our um, draft policy on regarding, um, you know, because I, I was chair throughout the discussions and it is based on um, evidence and it has to be now. Um, we do in our model conditions say four, don't we, Uma? We're not magically picking up this number. Uh, we heard your, your agent saying that, you know, you were selling to local people. Why do we suggest four, Sebastian? Um, that you can't sell cans in less than four. Uh, less than four. Yeah. Uh, two, so two can so can nobody can cut. Sorry, to, I'm going to try and make the question as clear as I can. Yeah. Somebody could come in if we yeah. didn't impose this and have one can. We say, because street drinking is a problem, and that's yeah. why it's in the community of impact zone, you yeah. have to have four. You can't split that plastic yeah. thing that links all four. Now, why do you think we do that? Well, because they are throwing in the street, one can selling, they're drinking in the street, and throwing rubbish outside. That's why I don't want to sell a single can. What is the price of a single can? I'm, I'm not up with the, you know, what the price is. 
Yeah. And, what, and what would be four? Four is um, five pound, six pound. Yeah, four. yeah, yeah. And why do you think miniatures are an important issue for us for street drinkers? Yeah, the miniature bottle also same. But they are starting miniature, they're drinking and throw it to the street. That's why I don't want to sell it in miniature. Right. Your agent has offered up something regarding 20 centiliters. Our usual recommendation is quarter bottles at 35. Um, so we, we, we may, you know, have that discussion when we're deliberating. Um, just my last one to yeah. Suresh, I think, but then I'll bring in I, I, anybody else can come in at any time. Remember, you know, on the questions, um, there's there's also suggestion in the representations that um, you know, we, I think we've gone through them very vigorously, including this four cans. I was leaving that to the end. That um, And we've looked at, you know, crime statistics, et cetera, and the deliveries, but there's an, and the litter issue. But I'm going to bring it back to you, Suresh. Is your client aware that you have to have a rebuttable presumption at this point? No, he is totally aware of it. Um, I think those questions asked by the uh, you guys, you know, he didn't seems to me like he didn't heard it clearly. Um, so and I tried no, three times, in all due respect. Yeah, so I know. That I know, is I know. It, that's a matter of interpretation. I yeah. don't want you to speculate on the quality of answers. I'm just saying, is were you um, advising your uh, um, your uh, um, client? Yeah. That this was in the community of impact zone. Yeah, he, he totally... That, my question was fairly straightforward. I think. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, he totally know, totally knew, uh, even before we put the application, we had a conversation. Uh, the cumulative impact zone, I know it's a bit, uh, you know, unusual word for maybe somebody, but it's something, you know, he, I explained to him right now, you know, if you have a problem of, say, 10 people ringing on the street, for example, so if, you know, if another license is given, the problem is going to be exaggerated. There's more people going to train, like 12 people, 13 people, or there will be more problems. So that's why the humiliating impact policy is there. I explained to him, and he really understood, and he agreed all the conditions as well. Um, and even with the, you know, miniatures, he said, okay, yeah, we don't want people to train on the street, and um, and it's also part of the cumulative impact zone. So, um, you know, I totally agree to that and we want to, you know, support the, the, the licensing policy as well. So he is totally aware of it, Chair. And also he knows, I think even with his LinkedIn council where he was running the shop uh, and uh, he knew he had a number of conditions, you know, similar and he managed that as well effectively, you know. But right now, you know, I think, uh, he needs to hear sometimes a bit louder. Thank you, Chair. I think that's, that's it. Right. Um, does that constitute a summing up as well? Um, <laughs> I, I'm hoping it does, really, but I'm, I'm not curtailing debate. Councillor Murphy, are you urgent to come in with anything? No, thank you, Chair. Councillor Ruiz? Uh, no, thank you, Chair. Um, so the and I I'm content to leave it there. But Uma, if we, is there anything that? No, sure. I think you've covered all questions. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Um, Ian, you're you're content that we just go to the next stage at this point. Yes, Chair. And Connell, Connell suddenly thought of something. He's allowed to. I mean, I do this. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Just, you suddenly just, think um, of something. I'd rather we did it, you know, rather than everybody think that we've shut it down, you know, because if it's not been covered, I'd rather we covered it. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Just to clarify, really, on the point of the miniatures, um, how much would a bottle of 20 centilitres spirits cost? Yeah, uh, Sebastian, how much is 20 centilitres of spirit? 20, 20 centilitres with a quarter. Yeah, yeah, we know what it, the measure is, but that we want to know how much in pounds and pence. Sorry, sorry, are you getting uh, uh, feedback? Are you getting your wife to give you the answer at this point? Because I'm getting feedback down the line. Do you know the answer to the question? Because you're the person who is the applicant. We either have a, you, you, if you don't know the answer, I'd rather you didn't, you know, get this noise from the side. Um, I think the question was, Connell, you're correct, me if I was in, misheard you, that you were asking the price of 20 centilitre miniature box. That's correct. Sebastian, you're applying before a licensing committee 
and we just want the straight answer. Do you know what the price is of these 20 centiliters spirit bottles? Price is 4 dollars 99 4 Yeah. do you wish to come back? No, thank you, Chair. Right. And um, Suresh, I think you did your summing up, so I don't know if there's anything, because otherwise we can keep sort of coming. Uh, back yeah, in. I don't uh, have anything to add, Chair. I think I will, I don't know if Emmanuel, Sebastian Emmanuel want to say something. Yeah. Anything uh, further? It's your chance, Sebastian, before we make a decision. Well, we don't make the decision in front of you. We have to go and talk about it. But anything further you wish to add before we... Yeah. Because anything I'm writing them letter back and put the windows outside. Uh -huh. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now, in, in accordance with our procedures as outlined in the bundle that people are having, this is the benefit of everybody, but also those watching us. We, we actually now pass a motion because members pass a resolution to deliberate in private. So we will go off camera. There'll be instructions. So don't press any leave buttons for any horrible reason. I know we get excited and press the wrong buttons if we're not careful. You have to wait for instruction. But we, the members, that's Councillor Ruiz and Councillor Murphy and um, Councillor uh, Wilson, myself. But we may be joined by Councillor Ali, but he won't be part of the decision. He's just observing the process. We'll be joined by Omar and... Uh, um, uh, for legal advice and also the clerk because we need to make certain we're fair to everybody and what's been said um, and um, I don't think we have Alex in the room do we at that point because he's, he's here as somebody who's going to be on there so it's only those people um, is that okay everybody we'll be going into a room we don't know how long we'll deliberate but we exclude the press and public we'll be the same in the town hall we'd, we'd throw you out as it were but we're going to throw ourselves out and there's different rooms set up. So enough from me, because it's getting all complicated how the, you know, I better not dare say what you press on deliberation room. So uh, Janine, are you able to assist me? <laughs> this technical Hello. Question. Yes, I'll open the rooms. So if you, if you choose not to go into the room, can you please turn your camera and microphone off and I will display a holding sign. Thank you. Everybody clear? We're going into the deliberation room.
Can everybody still hear me while we're waiting to assemble? Because sometimes we lose the link going into different rooms. Colin, can you hear me? Yeah. Mohammed, can you hear us? All right. Yeah. I'm just using you as a check on this. We've lost Alex. So he didn't have to stay. He was observing process. But the applicant is, we've got the mantelpiece, but no applicant. You've got no agent. Oh, Alex has been. Thank you. We're just, are uh, there, Suresh? Uh, we're waiting on your applicant, Suresh. Can you hear me all right, Alex and Suresh? Uh, yeah, I can, I can hear you, but I think he, uh, he left uh, with the computer. I think he was not well. So. Oh, it's not well. So, yeah, so, yeah. so yeah, yeah. It, you, 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 you know, I'd rather he heard this decision as he's the applicant, but you, you're saying he's not, because his he's, he's screen's still on. Screen but, on, I think he left, he sent me a message, I'm going to sleep or something, so. All right, okay. So we do need to make progress because, you know, obviously council's going on to other meetings. We're, we're evening birds, you know, well, 24-7, really, but that's a different issue. Now, um, we have made a decision, and I'll ask our committee clerk to read it out, please, Nisha. It's Nisha. Sorry, can you hear me, Nisha? Sorry. I can, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, that's yep. better, yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Thank Having you. heard all submissions written and oral, the licensing subcommittee have decided to refuse the application. A full written decision with reasons will be provided with the aim of it reaching all parties within working, uh, five working days. Did everybody hear that? It went a bit low for me. Sorry, Nisha, I know it's a bit of a pain, but I'd rather we all heard it. It went low in the middle. It wasn't your fault. I think it's the connection. Oh, would you like me to repeat it, Chair? Yes, yeah. I would. Yes, because it went low. I think Sarah did it for you. I, I, yeah, I, I, I couldn't said. hear it. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. thank you. Having heard all submissions, written and oral, the licensing subcommittee have decided to refuse the application a full written decision with reasons will be provided with the aim of it reaching all parties within five working days. And there are three things for, for me to say before I close the meeting. One is obviously that the applicant and responsible authorities and interested parties may appeal against our decision to the magistrate court within the um, statutory period of 21 days. Also, thank you very much for the way everybody's cooperated. These Zoom meetings are very complicated sometimes. We've, we, we, you know, they are difficult, but thanks for your patience, um, both applicant agent, and thanks for the observers as well, you know, being persistent with us as well, because I think it's, it's the only way we learn. I mean, this is a whole new world. We are trying to get back into as many live meetings as possible, and we're gradually getting there, but um, thanks for your cooperation. And I... Unless there's anything further, Uma, I can't no see you. No, no, chair, that's all. Colin, did you have a something to say? Sorry. Sorry. Um, did you speak about the appeal? Yes. Yeah, it, I did get the appeal thing in. I saw. Yeah. Sorry, I missed that. Yeah, and just thank you very much for your cooperation, and therefore I declare meeting closed.